Good morning, and welcome to Littleton Street United Methodist Church. I am Mary Abbott, the Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and we are so happy you've chosen to join us today for worship. Whether you're listening on the radio or watching on Facebook or YouTube, thank you for being here today. If you are joining us on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to our channel so that you will receive notifications whenever we go live for services or other events. If you're joining us on Facebook, please like our page and enjoy exploring all the ways we continue to engage in ministry. Our Health and Wellness Committee would like your feedback on future programming. If you did not receive an email with ways to submit your input or would like more information, feel free to contact Laurie Funderburg. This week's online programming includes Monday, Music Meditation with Ike at 5 p.m. You can find that on YouTube and Facebook. On Tuesday, our health and wellness video at 10 a.m. Thursday evening, we will have our online prayer meeting at 6 p.m. We ask that you send your prayers, your praises, and concerns to Krista at lsumc.net before 2 p.m. on Thursday so that those can be included. And then on Friday our video on reading the Bible together. If you or anyone you know is interested in our contemporary service, Elevate, join us this morning at 1115 on Facebook. Also remember that Children's Sunday School will be presented on Facebook this morning at 1030. We want to lift up members of our church family who are in need of prayer and to our prayer list that's found on the back of our bulletin, we include Lee Hughes. She is the daughter of Linda King who is experiencing some complications following surgery. We also want to lift up the folks at Epworth Children's Home in Columbia. They suffered loss and damage this past week due to an electrical fire in one of their storage buildings. So they have submitted a, a wish list of some things that they need to have replaced. So that wish list can be found on um, Epworth's Facebook page. It will also be um, put on our Facebook page. You can also call our church office if you would like to donate um, some items or maybe make a monetary donation. The church staff will be returning to regular office hours tomorrow, June 8th, with limited access to visitors. If you have business to attend to in our office, please call ahead so that we can prepare appropriately. The executive committee of our congregation via Zoom recently has decided that we will go back to corporate worship on Sunday, July 5th. We will all have to make accommodations to ensure the confidence and safety of everyone included. Please be in prayer for our worship committee and staff as we continue considering and implementing recommendations for a safe return to worshiping together. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
affirming our beliefs by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
I invite the children to come and spend some time with Miss Mary. Good morning. So today we're going to talk about temptation. But before we get started, I feel like I need to make a confession. I recently, about two weeks ago, got TikTok. Now that might surprise a lot of people. Um, and if you don't know what TikTok is, it's an app that you can put on your phone to watch and make crazy videos. I have no idea how to make a video, so I haven't made any, but I enjoy watching some of the fun and silly TikTok videos that are out there. One of um, my favorite to watch is something called the toddler temptation. It's where a parent sits something tempting in front of their young child. Then the parent tells the child that they can have the treat in just a few minutes, but that they have to wait for the parent to get back into the room. So something yummy, something tempting, something exciting is put right before the child, and the parent leaves the room for a few minutes. Well, the camera is still rolling. So people who are watching the video get to see the child face that temptation. And surprisingly, almost all the children, or at least the videos I've seen, they do, they wait. They're, they fight that temptation until the parent comes back in the room. TikTok might be new, but temptation is not. Temptation goes all the way back to the very beginning. And we read in the, in the beginning of God's word in the book of Genesis about temptation. And I bet you know the story that I'm going to talk about this morning. It is about Adam and Eve. We know that they were the first two people that God created. And he put them in a beautiful garden, the Garden of Eden. He gave them everything that they could need or want. And he told them they could eat anything there except the fruit of one tree. Well, before long, Eve was tempted by Satan. She ate the fruit. Then Adam ate some fruit. And when God approached them, nobody would take responsibility. Adam blamed Eve. Eve blamed the serpent. Nobody would, would own up or take responsibility. Temptation is not a sin, but it is how sin is born. We will always be tempted. We'll be tempted to do things or say things that aren't right, to do or say things that God doesn't approve of. Temptation is how sin is born. And sometimes we all make mistakes, but we love and serve a forgiving God. And when we do something wrong, we need to own it. We need to take responsibility, not blame someone else or something else. We need to just admit it, talk to God about it, and he will forgive us. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for your love and for Jesus and for forgiveness. Thank you for being there for us when we mess up, when we fall into temptation and sin. Forgive us, Lord, we pray. Amen. I hope you have a great week. I'll see you next Sunday. The Lord be with you. Awesome. Let us uh, be in prayer. Heavenly Father, the world provides us with varied experiences, joyful sounds and sights of creation. We discover a moment of serenity and peace only to have that special moment invaded by sights, sound, and the sounds of violence. In an instant, People's businesses and livelihood are destroyed and even lives are lost. We ask why. As we know, not everyone is noted for peace and reconciliation, but only to destroy. Good and proper protests can bring about special changes in and something good in our community before we can before we cast our stone in someone's direction challenge us today to stop 
and examine our lives and see if we have failed to be reflectors of grace and servants of Christ. Speak to us, Father, and challenge our compassion, our compassion for anyone who struggles with difficult issues and prejudice. Challenge us today to speak words that offer acceptance, not negative judgments and division. Empower us with grace so that our words never hurt and but heal and comfort. O oh, Father, some of our first responders worked tirelessly during the pandemic, which is still with us, and that remains now and still touches lives and brings about death. And now others respond to the recent violence. Protect those responders as they see to protect all of us. But, but where has been the injustice? May we, may we be the ones to invite justice, to pray for justice, and to be just like in all of our undertakings. As we pray for our families and friends, we need that need healing. We also pray for those involved peacefully in the protest, and especially a comfort and those family members of George Floyd and others who have lost their lives or been injured in the, the violence that has filled our lives most recently. Come, O oh God, stir our hearts, speak to us. As Bishop Holston of our annual conference has made a statement regarding the recent days. He said, and I quote, move forward, let our protests be peaceful. Let our strength be our unity and let our actions reflect the glory of the Lord. And so Father, we ask for your strength and your wisdom to be your people, to be peaceful people and to bless protect and honor human life. This I ask, O oh Father, in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this moment, we pause to consider the many blessings God has shown us and showered upon us. If you feel led to give back to God by sending a gift uh, to further the ministries of this church. Please follow the link uh, for online giving in the uh, commitment section of your screen or mail your gift to the church office. <laughs>
open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, may we hear with joy what you have to say to us today. Amen. A thank you to Michael Arant, our senior pastor, for extending to me uh, this opportunity to share in this time of worship with you. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, uh, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Names are very important. It is our identity. It attaches us to specific people, to specific locations, to ancestral trees, so to speak. So they are very important to us. And they also are a, a luminary or a light to our character. Well, nicknames are the same way. Now, I'm just going to share two with you, two neat ladies of this congregation. One named Alice. Now, if you called her Alice, she probably would not have responded. But if you said Deet, you got her attention. I don't know about the nickname, only that I was instructed by Alice to call her Deet. And I did. She was a joyful lady and always enjoyed uh, a little neat story of, of different people and situations. The other lady was named Neva. But she didn't go by Neva. We all knew her as Kuda. When she was very small, the nanny said to the family, you need to name this little cooter. So they named her, but the nickname of Kuda stuck with her the rest of her days. She too was a spirited lady of faith. And at the age of 103, she was still praising the Lord and playing her piano playing many, many, many of the hymns. Names are important. And if I heard both of my names spoken by my mother, I knew that I needed to move now. I chose this Old Testament reading from Exodus for a particular reason, because in it, as you may recall, it is the setting of the burning bush that uh, Moses encountered and the voice of God speaking from the bush. And in it, God commissioned Moses and uh, Moses said, if I go and what am I to say if they ask, who sent you? And God said, you are simply to say, I am sent you. Now, there are many names in, in the Old Testament for God. I wish to share only four with you very quickly. The first name I would share with you is Elohim, which in Hebrew simply means creator. And that name sheds a lot of light on the character of God who in his mighty power created the world and then at the end of that creation created humanity. The second name for God I share with you is El Roi, which means the God who sees me. Now that came about, I think, primarily because of Hagar the handmaiden to Sarah, Abraham's wife. Hagar had a child for Abraham. His name was Ishmael. And the two of them were banished from Abraham's family. 
we see them in the in the desert and uh, they need water to drink and uh, Hagar is very upset, very distraught. She places Ishmael under a bush, and she goes and sits down under another bush and contemplates her ultimate demise, her death. God saw her. God sent an emissary, an angel, and pointed out for Hagar's benefit a well. Was that well put there at that incident by God? No, the well was always there. God simply opened Hagar's eyes to see the goodness of God and to see the well and have the water that she needed. And then another name is Yahweh Rophi, which means God heals, and he does. He did, he has, even today and in all of the tomorrows, he will heal us of what is happening, what is occurring in our lives, what needs to be changed. And then there is Yahweh Nisi, which I think is a neat one. It's simply translated, the Lord my banner. All of these names that I've shared with you about God illustrate his character, illustrates his action and his care for all of his children. Well, it is very evident that we are in a turmoil. Coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, and now protests and on the behalf of Charles Floyd and the injustice heaped upon that man. Protests and a lot of violence and destruction. So, what is in store for us? I have no crystal ball. But I know that we will come through all of this as we rely upon God. Yahweh Elroy, God who sees me. He is aware of our plight and he is ready and poised to give us aid. Our resident bishop, Jonathan Holston, put a statement on the website of the annual conference about the protests and what is happening. I quote the bishop, when we witness inexplicable injustice, anger is understandable. Protest is appropriate and action is vital. Violence and destruction is never the answer. I continue, unfortunately, the good works of the many are too often overshadowed by the malicious actions of the few, end quote. The bishop is right. We need and have had protests throughout the years. Martin Luther protested about the practices of the church. 93 of them he listed on the church door. His protest brought about the Protestant Reformation. And later John Wesley, who was denied the pulpit of the church that ordained him, the Anglican church, he preached in the open. And thus the movement called Methodists. In the 20s, that was about the time my mother was a a young woman, there were the protests of the the suffrage of women who, who marched and protested and gained the right to vote. Protest 
if done correctly, can bring about change. And so we are called Methodists, the people of the United Methodist Church. And we are to follow a particular but yet precise motto that we will see on a lot of publications of the church and so forth. And it simply is that we are to have, we are the people of Christ who are to have open minds, open hearts, and open doors. So, what is our next step? The next step is to move ever forward to face the situation, whether it be individually or collectively, and put it before God, the God who sees. And as he sees, he will react and he will bring to us that which is needed. The answer is not to be sequestered behind closed doors of our homes and our church, but necessarily momentarily. This too shall pass, and we shall return to a more normal existence as we determine it. Like, I like what Bishop Holston wrote and another part of the article because it tells us what we need to do. And I quote, moving forward, let our protest be peaceful. Let our strength be our unity and let our actions reflect the glory of the Lord, end quote. Moving forward, trusting and relying upon the intervention of God in our lives. And let us recall the Christ-like love that, that flowed from the folks and the situation that occurred at Mother Emanuel Church a few years ago in Charleston. There emanated from that congregation a Christ-like love that really resounded across the waves and around the world. Our church discipline speaks of movement. The discipline says that the church is a strategic base from which we move out to the structures of society and their influence whatever needs to be changed for the sake of humanity. We must also be a truth. If we're going to move out, if we're going to witness, if we're going to assist in making changes for the betterment of humanity, we have to be what Harold Prater called is the truth. In his book, Release from Phoniness, Harold said that we must be a truth. That means demonstrating a genuine compassion, like that of God in Christ. Christ was very compassionate, God was compassionate with, with the, the Hebrew people, fed them for those 40 years in the wilderness. Christ was compassionate, not only for the people of his time, but also for the people of every age and generation. We have to be a truth. We have to be genuine in speech, and in response to other individuals that we encounter. If we are not a genuine truth with true compassion, then 
we will fail to do what needs to be done. And, uh, and our words and actions are going to be hollow, having a false ring about them, like noisy, clanging cymbals that Paul describes in the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians. So we have to move out. We have to be a truth. We have to be genuine in all that we do. Speech, action, response, and so forth. We must be the genuine article, a genuine Christian indeed, a disciple of the Christ. What is next? We need to keep ourselves grounded in Christ and God the Father. And we do that through prayer. Offering up to God our petitions for our own well-being, but offering up genuine prayers for the well-being of other individuals. Genuine, honest prayers that are accepting of other individuals as well. I don't know when, but sometime in the future, I will stand before the God who created me, as will all of you. When we stand before God, we certainly do not want to hear the Lord say to us, you had a good witness whenever you worshiped, but you did not take that witness to the streets. My friends, we need to be honestly open with each other. We must be honestly open before God who is with us. And then we have to be truly genuine and open and honest with the people we meet. So let us be genuine of heart, having open minds, demonstrating a truthful acceptance based on our alliance with God and Christ. Several years ago, when I was in seminary, that was the time of the protest with Dr. Martin Luther King, who, by the way, spoke of, uh, mar uh, had marches and spoke of uh, a witness protests, but nothing violent, always nonviolent protests in order to gain change. And the scene was in Washington. That sea of people with Dr. Dr. King speaking and Washington's monument in the background. And in that speech, he, he had the phrase, I have a dream. And there was ever, several things that he mentioned but the one that resonates with me today for this day and time, he said, and I quote, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they are not judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character, end quote. Through prayer, through the scripture, we become grounded in Christ. We become more authentic people of God. Our words ring true. Our hands gesture with kindness and mercy and generosity. So let us go forth. Let us pick up the cross. 
Let us lift high the cross, for that is the banner under which we live and move about. El Roi, the God who sees me. Amen.
little lot of mine. 